What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna be installing some new carpet on this 2015 Chevy Silverado. If you need carpet for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. So we wanna disconnect the battery because we are gonna um, remove the connector for the airbag. There is an airbag in this seat. Um, this vehicle has manual seats, so I'll disconnect the battery now. If you had electric seats, you're gonna want to first position the seat forward, remove the anchors for the seat, and then disconnect the battery. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Loosen up the negative terminal on the battery. And disconnect it. I'm gonna just slide this cable out of the way. I don't want it to accidentally hit the negative terminal on the battery. We want to access the bolts in the rear of the seat. There's one right there we can access, but this one has a cover over it. So we'll take this off. Just grab this piece, slide this off like that. And then underneath here, we're going to have to slide this off. You might have to move the seat. I am going to move it back. From the front, I'm just gonna slide this out like that. This comes off. This slides forward a little bit. There's a little clip right there. All right, now I'm gonna slide the seat forward. Now we wanna remove these two bolts. I'm gonna use a T50 and a ratchet. Loosen these up. those bolts out. Before we move the seat back, I want to disconnect the seat belt from the seat. So I have to remove this cover right here. So I'm just going to use a trim tool, get under here. This kind of like slides up. Be careful with the plastic. There we go. So there's some clips right here. One of them broke, so sometimes that happens, but it'll still stay, stay secure once we're done. I'm gonna take this screw out. I'm gonna use a T30 and a ratchet. Take that out, then just grab the seatbelt, slide it down, pull it up. I'm just gonna back the seat up now. Like I said before, if you have electric seats, You'd want to move it back now and then disconnect the battery before we disconnect the airbag. Right, now I'm going to disconnect the airbag on this. I'm just going to use a straight blade screwdriver, pull the lock back, and then this connector has a little lever right here. Push down on that red tab and then slide the lever. And that'll disconnect right there. All right, before we pull the seat out, I am going to Take a straight blade screwdriver. There's a little trim piece right here that has to come off. Otherwise, it's gonna prevent you from sliding the seat out. Ah, it just slides forward like that. So there's a clip right here on this side, and then there's also one on the back side. So it's kind of hard to get that one in the back side right there. So I have that all disconnected. Uh, sometimes it's easy to come from the back side and lift the seat up and then you're going to grab from underneath and slide it out. Now the seat is completely disconnected from the car. Now getting the seat out of the vehicle can sometimes be a challenge. So have the doors open. Um, a lot of times the seat's pretty heavy so you might need a helper to help you get the seat out. Just grab the seat. Be careful near the door, you don't want to scratch anything. Just close that door a little bit and then pull the seat up. Now I can do the same with the other side.
All right, I'm gonna remove these two bolts. I'm gonna use a 15 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. There's two on this side and two on the other side. There's two connectors under here. You could disconnect these before you took those bolts out if you want. Uh, I'll just use a straight blade screwdriver, back the lock off, and push down on the lock tab on the connector. Disconnect that one, and then this one as well. Use a screwdriver to release the lock tab. Push down, and pull the connector off. All right, now we can grab the center console, lift it up. Just be careful not to hit the door. Slide it up. So we're gonna take the rear seat, grab this handle underneath this strap, lock that seat like that. With the seat in the up position, I'm gonna take an 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And we wanna take this nut out behind here. This is for the seatbelt. Take this one off. Take this nut off. Slide this bracket up. And we can grab from up here. And grab the seatbelt and slide it out of the way. Just put it right there. To remove the seat, you actually don't have to remove this one. Just slide the belt buckles through the bottom. I want to remove these four nuts. There's two on this side and two on that side. If on this side, if the jack is in your way, there's supposed to be a jack right here. It's not here on this vehicle. You're going to want to pull that out. And then I'll just take the 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet and take these nuts out. So when you take the last nut out of that bracket, the, fold, the seat is gonna fold forward a little bit. So don't worry about that. It shouldn't fall all the way. It's just, um, lifting up from the back side of the bracket, just be aware. Now we're gonna lift it out. It's a good idea to grab a helper because this seat is very heavy. What we're gonna do is fold that seat in, grab underneath, lift up, and then we can slide it out one of the doors. It's just mostly awkward. It's not w wicked, wicked heavy. There you go. So on the back side of the seat, this is these hooks. This is why you need to lift the seat up to get those hooks out of the anchors in the vehicle. This is where those hooks go in on both sides, one on this side, one on that side. I want to remove this bracket. I'm going to take this 10 millimeter nut off and this one as well. Just use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Nut off. You can just grab this bracket, slide it up, pull it out of the way. I want to remove this nut over here. Same on the other side. I'm going to use an 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And I can pull the seatbelt out of the way. Gonna take a pocket screwdriver, get in underneath this little panel right there, pull that little cover off. Then I'll take a seven millimeter socket and a ratchet. I'll take this bolt out right here. And I'll just grab the panel. Pull it straight out. Before you pull this panel off, you're gonna have to pull this one off. Just grab underneath here. Pull it straight out, these two clips, and hold it in. And there's a push retainer right there. Just take a little pocket screwdriver, push the center in just a little bit. 
you should be able to pull that retainer out. Just like that. Now we can just grab behind this panel, push it forward, just like that. It's a little bit tricky to pull this out. On the back side, there's a retainer there, retainer there, retainer there. These two panels separate right here. So I'm just gonna slide this gray one off the black one. Just use a little pocket screwdriver underneath these tabs. Slide that out. Then I can leave this gray one here, remove the black one. And repeat these steps for the other side. There we go. All right, we wanna take this panel off. I'm just gonna grab a trim tool, get underneath the back here. There's gonna be a lock that's attached these two panels together. Once that's released, then we pull it straight up and then pull it out this way. There's the clips that hold it in. There's clips on the bottom that hold it in. We're gonna remove this panel. I just need a straight blade screwdriver get in under here and right here, and there's two bolts. We're gonna take those two bolts out. We use a 10 millimeter socket, extension, and a ratchet. All right, with those bolts out, then we're just gonna grab the top of this panel. We're just gonna pull it straight forward. So this is pretty difficult to remove. I'm gonna use a metal trim tool, just get underneath there, try to pop this off. There we go. Pop that off. And just pull it straight forward. You can slide the seat belt through the center there. Then I'll show you on the back side these retainers. So this is the one that was giving me trouble, right up top there. And then these retainers down here, and down there. So you could separate this if you needed to, but we're just gonna leave it all together and set it aside. And now we're gonna do the same with the other side. So we want to grab this shifter right here and grab it with two hands and pull it up with a lot of force. Straight up like that. That's how you pull it off. Now we want to pull this trim off right here. We're going to use a T15 extension and a ratchet. Pull the screw out right here. Take a pocket screwdriver. Just get under here. There's a little trim panel, a little cover. Take that cover off. And there's some screws in there. Take your 15 millimeter T15. Take that one off and then take the other one off. Grab the cover and just slide it straight up. You want to take this trim piece off right here. Just grab it, pull it forward. Just like that. There's a clip right there. That one stayed in there. And then the other side, pull that out. I'll just take some needle nose to squeeze this clip. And slide that out of the way. And we will, there's three bolts right here. We'll use a 13 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet and take these out. Pull that last bolt out, pull that bracket, set it aside. Okay, now we're gonna grab the carpet. Um, there's a little vent right here. Slide the carpet around the vent. You should be able to grab the rest of the carpet. And then it's stuck on the vent on the other side, so I'll just move that. Just pull that up like that. And slide it out. 
can roll it up if it makes it easier. And pull it up for the rear carpet. Just slide it up. There is, it is attached on the side right there. Now we could pull this seatbelt buckle out or we can just slide it through the carpet. We're just gonna slide it through. It's caught right here. Oops, the trim tool. So I'm just gonna roll this up, make it easier. Light it up. Here's the old carpet, the front and the rear. Here's the new carpet from 1AAuto.com. As you can see, this looks a lot nicer than what we took out of this vehicle. This vehicle is a smoking vehicle, so it has a bad odor and trying to get it out and replacing the carpet's gonna help out significantly. Um, the carpet comes in the right shape. You are gonna have to transfer the holes over, which is no big deal. It comes with this jute pad that goes underneath the carpet that actually helps with sound deadening and it's the insulation. Get yours at 1AAuto.com and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Just take this. I'm gonna put the insulation down first. And there is gonna be some spots that we have to trim. So we're gonna wanna take some scissors because there is some areas that are not cut out in this and we'll just have to trim it. This stuff is really hard to cut, so you're gonna wanna get some good scissors. And after you're done this, the scissors are probably gonna be dull. So just a FYI. All right, so we'll just get this to line up back here. Trim this. Or you can use a utility knife and try to cut this, but it really does not cut easily. So we trim that out right there. There's another stud coming through right here. So We'd want to trim that and there's going to be a bunch of other places that we're going to have to trim. Uh, we'll use some good scissors and go through, trim all that stuff up. You can also reference the carpet for the holes to cut out in that insulation pad. You can flip this over. This one has the pad already on it, so you could trim it down this small if you wanted to. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. So we can take the new carpet and lay it down on the old carpet if you wanted to and line up the holes and then just trim it out slightly. But uh, I wouldn't cut too big of holes just in case there's going to be some slight differences. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in the car and start trimming it in the car. So I'm going to line this up with this little bump right here. So it's a good place to start. Try to lay it out flat. We are gonna have to trim all this area. So for the front one, I am gonna line it up with the old one. I'm just gonna line the footrest up right there. And then right here, there's a section that's molded. Just try to line that up as good as possible. Right like that. And I'm not gonna cut out everything, but for this vehicle, it has the shift lever for the four wheel drive. That hole is kind of critical. So underneath here, let me fold this back. So you can see this hole right here, that's the one I wanna cut before anything. So if I cut that in here, then when I go to install it in the car, that can go over. Everything else I'll cut out in the car. All right, so make sure that's pushed down. Right there is where I want to cut. I'm just gonna cut a slit down the middle. Right like 
like that. This carpet's a lot easier to cut than that insulation. So that's good. And just slice like that. And I can trim it up a little bit better when it's in the car, but at least then I'll be able to get over that shift lever. Okay, so as long as the carpet's on secure like that, I'm gonna go from the middle out and make sure the carpet kind of overlaps a little bit. You don't want to trim the edge yet. You want to trim the edge last once everything else is mm -hmm. in position. That's good right there. All right, now there's a little bit of excess in the back. I am just gonna tuck it up behind here underneath this pad. So this part right here, I just double checked with the center console and carpet is supposed to cover this area. It's not really a vent, it's just part of the frame. You're just supposed to have a couple slits. The center console is gonna cover it so it's not a huge deal, but keep that in mind when you're trimming yours. Um, these are not vents, just keep a little bit of carpet over there. So because it's going to be difficult to trim this on the front side of it, I am going to trim it outside of the vehicle first. So I'm just going to line up this foot, foot rest right here and just line up some of the, the molded part on the back right there, make sure that's good. And then I will just trim it with some scissors. These hose cutters work pretty good, even for cutting the carpet. I'm sure carpet scissors would work even better, but use what you got. All right, now slide the new carpet in. Make sure you get underneath the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal. Pretty good. So we want to remove these pins from the old one. These hold the floor mats down. Um, we don't have the actual floor mat that goes to this vehicle, but what you want to keep in mind is, so one pin goes there, one goes there. Now you can transfer your floor mat over to the new one. line it up where it's supposed to go and you can make a mark and that's where you're going to cut the carpet so we can add those pins. All right, to take these out, I'm just going to take a straight blade screwdriver. They're like clipped in. Pop that out and then slide this out. So when you go to install this in the new one where you made your mark, you're gonna make a slice right there and then a little slice right there. So don't actually drill a hole where you made the mark. That's just where the center is gonna be. And then same with the other one. I'm gonna install this plate. And I'll take a 13 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. Tighten these up. I'll snug those all up. I'll take this panel. This is going to go on the inside. That goes like that. This one goes like this. locks in place. I'll take this four wheel drive cover trim piece and install that right there. All right, so I'll take these screws, take a T15, get them started with a extension. There's two down here and then one up top. This 
those are snug, I can take this cover. Just put it right there. All right, now I'm gonna take the center console. Slide the pins in underneath there. That looks pretty good. And I'll plug this connector in over here. Now I could have left more of a flap on the carpet here. Lock that in place. Connect this one and lock it in place. The bolts, there's two bolts on this side and two bolts on the other side. I'll take a 15 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet, tighten these down. Take the knob, slide it in position, lock it down. All right, now we're gonna wanna take the trim um, before we put the seats in and stuff and see if we have to trim the carpet a little more. Let's go install this in position here. So yeah, the carpet's coming past here a little bit, so we don't need it to go that far. So I would suggest trimming it back piece by piece. And also when you're cutting over here, watch out for wires. You don't want to cut into the wires. Good. So that's good. Watch out for wires. Just, there's some wires behind here, so let's trim this back a little bit. All right, now we're gonna attach these trims together. Just get that seatbelt out of the way. So these just latch together right here, right here. And just check your push clips. Make sure your push clips are in there. Slide this in position. So there's a little alignment pin down in the bottom. You wanna line that up with the hole. And then there's an alignment pin at the top. So you wanna line that up. Once those are both lined up, give it a push. Gonna line up down here. And the weather stripping, we're gonna use a, you can use your fingers and just pull this out. Or you can use a, like a screwdriver or a trim tool. Just take this pick tool and slide underneath the weather stripping. And that looks good. Install this push pin right here. Take this cover and go right on top. I'm just gonna use a little bit of tape on my socket. Just tape around the screw and the screw won't fall. Now you can always use a little bit of grease or you can put the tape inside the socket. There's a couple different methods. So now I'll install the screw, the seven millimeter socket extension. Once I get it started, I'll take the ratchet, tighten this up. Just snug it and then pull it off. Take this cover, slide it in position, lock it in place. All right, I'm just gonna separate these two pieces right here. We're gonna install the top part first, slide the seatbelt through. So you're gonna need to line this up with these two little tabs right here so that this mechanism actually works so that you can slide the seat belt up and down. So this is a little bit tricky because while you're lining that up, you can move this up and down. You have to line the rest of the panel up. So let's see. That looks pretty good, right like that. There isn't a little alignment tab on this part of the panel right there. So once you get that lined up, push that in. Um, I'm gonna use a pick and get around the weather strip. Just slide 
like that. Like that. And then just check this, make sure that's working properly. And then the weather strip on this side. Just slide this out. I'll just take a 10 millimeter socket and an extension. Get these bolts started. Get this one and then this one. Snug those down. Put these little covers on. It goes there and then this one goes right here. Now we'll take this piece, line this up. You're gonna have to push it down pretty far. Just make sure the carpet's in the right position. And then pull the weather strip around the edges with a pick or a screwdriver. Just do it slowly, otherwise you're gonna rip the weather strip. Get it there, should be able to bang that on. Just like that, same on this side. Just like that. If you're struggling with getting the panels on because that weather stripping is giving you a hard time, you can pull the weather stripping off. Um, I like to leave it on and leave it in its natural shape so that I don't disform it or anything. But if you need to, it'll be a lot easier to take the weather strip off. Take this little trim piece. This is gonna slide in the back and then just get pressed in. Take this piece and just slide this. There's clips on the back side that go forward. Those go in there and then these get pushed down. Just slide this in. Press it down. Then we're gonna repeat the steps on the other side for trimming the carpet and installing the trim. Uh, this piece is gonna go right here. You're gonna use the, uh, put your jack back on there afterwards. We don't have a jack, but there's a stud right here that I need to cut a little hole in the carpet to have the stud come through. And I can take this bracket, slide it in position. Put a nut right there, and then there's a nut that goes on this side too. And we can take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, tighten it down. When we go to put the back seat in, it's actually easier to have these seat belts out of your way. So I'll just slide these over here, just so we can just slide the seat right in. Okay. Now we're gonna use a partner and uh, slide the seat back in. I'll go well? Sure. Now you wanna slide those hooks in the back, up top first and then try to get the brackets to line up down below. Perfect, all right, thanks Sue. Now we're gonna install the nuts. Two on the other side and then two on this side. All right, now I'm gonna tighten these up. Just use a 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Now I'm gonna pull the seat belt back out of here. And reposition over here. Just like that. Take this nut, get this started. And use a 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Tighten this down. Now I'm gonna use the 18 millimeter socket and a torque wrench and I'm gonna to torque this nut to 33 foot pounds. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter socket and a torque wrench and I'm gonna to torque these nuts and then ones on the other side to 37 foot pounds. Now 
we can remove this seat belt from up here. I'm gonna slide this down here. You wanna make sure it's not twisted. I'm just gonna slide the seat forward a little and tuck it in. Take this bracket, it's gonna go on here. Just like that. Take this nut, install the nut, and then I'll torque that to 33 foot pounds. So you take the buckle side over here and tuck these in. So with this tip down a little bit, Try to push these through. There we go. There we go. And there's the seat. Now just try to slide the seat in without scratching anything. Once you're in position, you want to get the front of the seat in, clipped in. So these clips under here, I'm gonna go in those slots. Get them lined up. And then you grab the back of the seat, raise it up. And before I do anything else, I like to grab the front of the seat, make sure it's secure. That looks good. Now before I secure the back side, I'm gonna plug this connector in. Connector goes on this way. Latch it in. That's latched in. And then take the wire and just get it, tuck it in under the carpet like that. Now, if you have an electric seat, you can go hook the battery back up at this point because you're going to have to move it forward so you can get the rear bolts in. We don't have an electric seat, so we can just slide our seat forward just like that. Take these two bolts, one goes here, and one goes over here. And I'm gonna take a T50 and tighten these down. Now I'm gonna use a torque wrench and I'm gonna to torque these bolts to 33 foot pounds. What you wanna make sure is when you're torquing these bolts, because there is some thread locker on these bolts, um, they could not be tightened down all the way. Just make sure you take the seat and wiggle it a little bit. Make sure that it's not loose. It could give you a false torque. And that's good. Everything's nice and tight. Now we want to reinstall this screw right here. You can put a little thread locker on there. And then take the seat belt. Make sure the seat belt's not twisted. Slide this latch into there. The screw in using a T30. Then I'll take a ratchet, snug it up, and we'll torque it. And we're going to torque this to 33 foot pounds. Then we'll take this cover. The cover is going to slide in down below and then just lock in place. Now we want to install these trim pieces. We'll start with this one in the back. Just slide this in position right here. Get that like that. This piece is just gonna slide in from the front. Might be easier to push the seat back a little bit. Just get this to line up. And there we go, that's on. Make sure that it snaps in together. You might have an easier time putting this piece on than the back piece, either way. We have this front trim piece. This is gonna go right here and just slide in place. And then we're gonna do the same with the other side. Now we'll just hook up the battery. Get the negative cable, slide it through here. Get that in position. Take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet and just tighten this up. Get it snug. 
Then grab the negative terminal and just wiggle it, make sure it's tight. That's good. So we finished our carpet, came out awesome. As you can see, it looks brand new. So what I am gonna do is just take a vacuum and vacuum it out, because there is some dust on it and some stuff while we were installing it. But hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.